borrowing with three place numbers. The example, the hardware store had 879 feet of one inch pipe in stock. A plumber bought 396 feet of it. How much one inch pipe is left? So we've demonstrated there are our numbers up here. We have 879 and from that we're subtracting 396. Well, let's look at our ones column. We have a six and a nine. We can subtract, that's no problem. Six from nine is three. Let's look at our tens column. We have a nine in our bottom number and a seven, so we cannot uh, subtract without borrowing. So let's borrow from the eight, which converts that to a seven, and this becomes a 17. So nine from 17 is, of course, eight. And let us subtract three from seven, and we have four. So the solution to this would be 483. But again, always ask yourself, what does this number mean? What does this number represent? And we know this number, 483, represents how much one inch pipe is left. One of the things we always want to do when we subtract two numbers is to check our work. And in subtraction, checking is nothing more than adding what we originally subtracted. So our solution, we had 483, and to that we're going to add what we, as I said before, originally subtracted, and that was 396. So let's add the two, and let's see what we come up with. We have 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 plus 8 is 17, carry the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 4 is 8. And you can see that our sum is equivalent to what we came up with originally. So this is correct. If this jet coming in for a landing had only 98 passengers on board, but it could seat 132 passengers. How many more passengers could get on this jet? Let's do the math. The capacity of the jet is 132 passengers, but only had 98, and that's not good for the airlines. They like to have a full jet. So how many more passengers could this jet have had? We can't deduct the 8 from the 2, so we have to borrow from the tens column. Makes that a 2 and a 1. Now we can subtract 12 minus 8 equals 4. And again, we can't subtract the 9 from the 2. We have to borrow from the hundreds column. Makes this a 0. Now we can deduct 12 minus 9 equals 3. So the jet could have 34 more passengers. And that would make a happy airlines if they could fill their jets always to capacity. This is the Sears Tower in Chicago. The height of this building is 1,454 feet. It once was the tallest building in the world. It held this title for 22 years. The Sears Tower has 110 stories and the sky or observation deck is on the 103rd floor. Now we're going up to the sky deck. How many more stories can the elevator go? Before we do the math, let's take a look at Chicago from the sky deck. As you look across Chicago, think of all the math that was used to construct these buildings. Let's do the math. The Sears Tower, has 110 stories. The elevator only went up 103 stories. And so we want to find out how many more stories can that elevator go up. And we're doing this problem so you can understand deducting from three place numbers. Now I know you could probably do this in your head, but we're going to show you to do this on the board here. We can't take three from the zero, so you have to borrow from the tens column. This becomes a zero. Now we can deduct. 10 minus 3 equals 7. 0 from 0 is 0. 1 from 1 is 0. So the elevator still can go up 7 stories. Now we want to have another problem also. Now the Sears Tower was once the tallest building in the world. It's no longer today. But the Sears Tower, the height of it is 1,454 feet. 
There's another building in New York City that was once the world's tallest building, and that's the Empire State Building. And that height of the Empire State Building is 1,250 feet. How much taller is the Sears Tower from the Empire State Building? So 1454, deduct the Empire State Building is 1,250 feet. Zero from four is four. Five from five is zero. Four minus two is two. So the Sears Tower is 204 feet taller than the Empire State Building. Please pause the video now and complete the problems in your workbook. When finished, press play and we'll continue with the next lesson.